So you're a self-taught programmer and you haven't had a job yet, so you might ask yourself, is the things you learn on the tutorials on YouTube and Udemy actually applicable on a professional level, so in a job? So I was the same way. Two months ago, I started my first job and I quickly learned that the things you learn in tutorials and Udemy are okay. They're good, but there's some things that really caught me off guard. And I want to talk about that in this video. So you know what to expect when you get your first job. Welcome to DevWare, my name is Sam and today I want to talk about what surprised me when I started my first job around two months ago from the knowledge I had where, uh, of, let's say, YouTube tutorials and Udemy as a self-taught programmer. So a little bit about myself, so I mostly work on the front end, uh, even though I'm employed as a full stack developer, my project right now is to build a website system for a travel company. I work in a team of six to seven um, developers and the first thing I realized after doing my own projects and doing all the, the Udemy courses and YouTube videos and getting into different things that now working professionally one of the most uh, difficult thing is actually working in a team. So it's got, it took me around, let's say one month to really get to know the code base so that I'm now more or less fluent, let's say in the code base, so I know where things are and know how things work. But it took me uh, around two months that I'm actually functional now in the team with all the different methods we have for the project management and all of the different people that are responsible uh, that the website, let's say the designer and all the project team and everything that I'm kind of now in the team. So that really surprised me that it takes longer to work in a team uh, than for me to getting to know the code and knowing how things work there. Uh, then the other thing I realized is also that there is a lot more detail, a lot more effort going into everything. So of course now I have my side projects, for example, that I built out. Uh, my largest example for uh, was an accounting program. and. When, for example, I had some kind of button and it wasn't really too obvious what it exactly does, I thought about having a tooltip there, but yeah, I didn't do it because it was just a little bit too much effort. But now on a professional level, this, uh, I don't really like to do it because it's a little bit too much effort, doesn't exist. So if it's needed, then it, you have to add it. And that adds a lot more complexity to the code base and everything. Then the third part I found out, fortunately I, ha I don't have to deal with that a lot in my project, but um, you might learn React in a very, very modern way. And of course, old code, base, uh, code bases are not that modern. So let's say, for example, you, I, for example, let's, let's put me as an example. I learned um, functional components from the beginning when I started to learn React. So I hadn't really a clue what exactly a class component is. And a lot of the old code base that the company has is in class components. So you might want to get yourself familiarized with the old way of programming, whatever programming language or, or a system you're working on. So in React, for example, you might want to look at class components um, in Python or in, in uh, let's say if you do web development, you might want to have a look at PHP instead of just JavaScript. So all of those things that you know that uh, a lot of those legacy applications that companies have is still important that you uh, know at least a little bit how they work and can at least read the code uh, which is in there. Even though especially as a self-taught programmer, you most probably learn the most modern way of doing things. Another thing is that everything takes much longer. When I'm on my side project, I'm building out a website quite, quite fast. So I don't have to do, uh, like I don't spend a lot of days, let's say on a website usually. But now in a more professional environment, everything takes at least three times longer because the whole feedback loop of you doing something, then it goes to the designer, the designer has something to the project management team and those go back to me as a developer. So all of those kind of little things add up a lot in a professional environment and it takes me at least three times more time to develop the same kind of, let's say, complexity or components or everything that were, yeah, on a professional level than what I would have in my side project. Then another thing is, of course, in my projects, uh, also, let's say, in Udemy courses I did or in my own projects, I never really had testing. 
and of course right now in a professional environment testing is like every file or almost every file you write you have to write a test file and I had no idea so I had and knew a little bit how testing worked and what kind of frameworks are out there for my language JavaScript but I really had no idea and I have to say I really have to do uh, some digging in to do into how to exactly write tests in our front end project the tests are not really too sophisticated because yeah at the end of the day testing front end is a whole other topic anyway but we don't do it really thoroughly but i had no idea beforehand what testing was and um, that you surely if you are a self-taught programmer and you want to work professionally that would be really one of my big suggestions to look at least a little bit into how to run uh, do tests and have all these unit tests and all of that just so that you have an idea what that, what that exactly is and that you already have written one or two tests before you get your first job then the thing that also was different that I have never seen, for example, is in, in my side project or in the in the courses I did, uh, especially for, for me again in the front end in React applications, we never had a lot of configs. So we didn't really uh, configure Webpack in a different way in React. We just used a normal create React app and everything like that. And in this um, project, it's because it's so customized, which I think most professional uh, companies will have a very customized kind of application. We have a lot of, lot of configs. And one of those is that we have different imports to be more modular and I've never seen them before. So uh, these uh, imports you can see now on the screen were yeah, never in any kind of courses I did. So that was quite uh, different to me. And that in general, there is just some quirks that are different in the code base now that what I've been used to. So uh, as I said in the beginning, I had pretty much a month I had to kind of figure out how exactly everything works together because they were just different than the most Udemy courses and the YouTube courses I've seen. Then another thing of course is that in the first month I really had a big headache of where what is so the whole folder structure was way larger and way more nested than anything i've seen in a, in a course or i've built myself so be aware that projects are at least five to ten times bigger than any udemy course you have seen even though um, i did some quite complex courses uh, that had many many components and everything in there there's nothing compared to the the code base i'm working on which is at least yeah five to ten times bigger than the biggest uh, course I did on, in like the front end courses. Then another thing I've never really done because I've never really contributed to open source as well is the code review. And I've seen a lot of memes that talk about code reviews and that they're really not too thoroughly. And it's kind of funny. That's pretty much the same thing I uh, experienced with my company. So um, of course they sometimes they have some comments, but most of the time you really have to know what you're doing because not like nobody will really go into too much detail at least in my company to see exactly uh how what is done especially in the front end code where so much is about how the design looks so yeah the code review is pretty easy going in my company uh which sometimes i would uh like that it's a little bit more especially in the beginning because i had no idea if if that's okay but this brings me to the next point um that now before in my own projects and in the courses I did, I could just push my code up to GitHub and then deploy it sometimes or most of the time with automatic uh, deployment from, I don't know, Netlify or something like that. But now in, in that company, I cannot just easily push up code to GitHub anymore. Um, because we have something that's called Husky, it's very, uh, very, very well known kind of, um, it did, it's kind of a program that runs in the background when you want to push something onto GitHub that checks your code. So it ES linting, so it checks if your code behaves the right way and does is written in the in the in the correct fashion, depending on the config you have with ES lint. So if you don't know what ES lint is, surely uh, have a look before you apply for your first job. And then also it runs all the tests. So if I mess something up and the tests are not good, it doesn't let me push up to GitHub. 
which yeah i had no idea that something like that even exists so that husky that that's the the, the script that runs that does that actually exists so that was pretty new for me as well and then the other thing is with the project i built and with what you see on youtube and if you do udemy courses many of the deployments so ci cd continuous integration and continuous deployment is pretty easily set up so it's usually just with netlify and you don't really have to think about anything you just push it up to github and then it deploys automatically in my company that's not really the case anymore so we have a whole ci cd um, workflow setup where we do uh, exactly the testing we want we do exactly the style um, guide testing that we want so with yes lint and pre year for example uh, otherwise it doesn't even let you push onto uh the the main branch and of course we have three different branches so development staging and the master branch the master branch is the uh, production branch then the sta staging is where uh let's say the, the people the project team they can have a look at how it looks like and the development is usually for uh for the developers so where they uh push on their uh their newest kind of features before they actually in a staging environment where the environment is very very similar to the production environment so you can really see how it's, everything is going and of course in my side projects i just had a look if it looks nice on the on the uh, production website of course in a professional environment you can't really do that you have to have these different stages in there so uh the, yeah i think that was pretty much it for what really surprised me um in now working since two months in in a company of before just having been in let's say udemy courses and doing my own project which is yeah at the end of the day quite different than what how i wrote code in the beginning and it takes a lot longer so i was very very surprised how long everything takes now that i'm a, let's say a professional coder in in comparison to my side projects i had all right, I hope this video helped. Um, if, especially if you are looking to get a, a job, I think it's very, very good to have a look at testing, ESLint, Prettier, to know what those do and maybe configure um, a React application if you're on the front end, for example, uh, in your own way to just kind of see how different configs are like and everything like that. All right, hope this video helped. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like that. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. See you in the next video.